So hello and welcome. Today I have the great pleasure to introduce Claire Baker to you. Um, hi Claire. Hello. Hi Karina. And so Claire's a um, holistic health coach um, and she's, this year she's, she's created a new website and she started blogging uh, on this is life's blood and I know it's been a pretty intense year for you with like lots of big changes and it's been really amazing to watch your, your journey and I love how you how you write because it's really authentic and you really get into like the deep stuff and like sharing personal experience as well and I think that's really, really inspiring to um, get away from that like the writing where it just feels like everyone has perfect lives <laughs> but as a reader it can feel a bit like why don't I have all my stuff together <laughs> so I always love reading what you what you write so um how would you like to would you like to share a bit about your journey and about who you are and the work you do or the work you want to do yeah absolutely uh, well as you said i'm a health coach so um the moment i'm coaching women on um, their health journeys basically um we touch on things like um like weight loss we touch things like dietary choices and exercise and we also get into things um like lifestyle choices so our relationships we talk about uh, like people are in their career um finances spirituality all kinds of things like that things that make our lives beautiful and passionate and and make our lives what they are so that's the kinds of things that i work um i do for work which is great and i love it mm -hmm. i love talking to people about what it is that they're passionate about and what their dreams are and what they want from their life and I'm incredibly blessed to be able to do that um, every day so that's really that's an amazing part of my life and that's what I do and as Karina said I also I blog so I'm a um, aspiring writer I'd love to um, to publish a few books one day but until then I'm just blogging on thisislifeblood.com and absolutely loving it I yeah I love talking about things that are real to me and how I, how I really feel and like you said it's not um, it's not always happy you know unicorns and rainbows and puppy dogs and wonderful sometimes it's, <laughs> it's harder than that so I always try to be real and authentic with my readers definitely yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's great also when you have like clients and, and you know that stuff comes up for them because it's great to be able to share about that because it does seem like we kind of share the same experiences at times like at sometimes everyone's going to feel really great and then and then at times people are feeling really like overwhelmed but it's like there are all these phases and it's great to be able to share with more people than just like one client one-on-one -on, -one. on the things that come on uh, come up i guess that gets the ideas as well for like interesting things to write about that will Absolutely. I was just saying to one of my clients this morning, it's like just learning to ride the waves. Like life is always going to um, to do this. Life is always going to do that. And it's just learning how to to ride with it and not to take everything so personally. If you're having a, a down week, it, you know, it's not nothing you've done. I think a lot of people feel really like, oh, what have I done to feel like this? Or, you know, take all those negative kinds of um, experiences really personally. And it's so nice, as you just said, to just have somebody who can go, yeah, do you know what? That's actually completely normal to feel like that and it's okay. It is going to, to get better and this is what it does, you know. And, and being a coach is about being an ally. It's not about being an expert. It's not about saying I know everything and I've got everything figured out because I don't and I'm constantly doing the work and, and figuring it all out just as much as anybody else. And having someone who's there alongside you, going through it with you is, and keeping you accountable is just so powerful. Mm. Oh yeah, I love what you said there about the coach being your ally because that's how I feel as well because I started coaching just this year and yeah. at first I didn't really know how I was going to do it because I'm not really a coach, well, whatever a real coach is. Um, but then I, I noticed that it's just like being there and sharing my experiences sometimes with someone who has decided that they want to make a change in their life. And just the fact that they're like determined to be on this path, um, that I'm there to kind of witness it and hold them accountable. I think that feels like that's what creates the magic and that, that's what keeps them going into like wherever they, they need to go. And, and so many things can change just from that. It's amazing, I find, that capacity that people have to 
to transform their lives. Like it's just amazing. And at the moment, it just seems to happen so quickly. Mm. So, amazing. Um, and I know you also write a bit about spirituality. So one of the questions I ask people in this video, in this interview series is, is how you connect with spirit. So I would love to know a bit about how you do that. <laughs> of course, absolutely. Well, one of the biggest things that has transformed my spiritual journey, if that's what we're, we're going to call it, is yoga. Absolutely, definitely. I've always been a spiritual person. I've always been... I've always prayed, I've always kind of had that practice and I've always um, believed in something bigger than, than myself. But I suppose I've never really um, came in, I've never really come inside as much as I have until I started practicing yoga. I always kind of believed that the search was out, out there, you know, and there was this something bigger than me and I always felt that presence. But until I started regularly, um, yeah, until I started regularly practicing yoga and really diving deep into that, that's when... I've really gone inside, I suppose, and felt that spirit and that presence here connected to everything that's out here. But it wasn't until I started doing that regular practice that it's come inside. So certainly a daily yoga practice, even if it's just 10 minutes in the morning um, or before I go to bed or in the middle of the day when I'm feeling a bit stressed, that helps big time. Absolutely. That's been transformative for me. Absolutely. Mm. Ah, that's great. And it's great to make it a daily practice as well. I, I don't know if everyone does that. <laughs> I kind of do it, not exactly every day, but, but it's great to do that it's kind of repetitive, isn't it? Because once you're in it, it kind of grows. And then you can take breaks, but then it's like you have to, you have to come back again. So, and maybe the fact that it's also uh, like um, related to our body. I think that's really powerful about yoga because it's like, it's the spiritual work and the physical work and there's something really magical and because it's so ancient too i guess <laughs> mm, yeah absolutely i mean even if it's just um you know a stretch in bed in the mornings or a few um you know a few back bends when you get out of bed you just stretch your back out a little bit even if it's just 10 minutes of that i find that just sets my day so much um so much smoother than you know if i hadn't have done it mm. so yeah, and it's just, a, it's just, I think it's such a great way to, to maybe loosen things up as well. Because I, I think that when we get a bit stressed, we kind of, we get like this. And then it's really difficult to get that flow going, isn't it? And to feel that connection because we're too much in our head, not really in our bodies. And then we're kind of closing everything down. So, so that's really great to, yeah, to do as well. And so, um, how do you find, like, about your writing? Do you feel that when you write, how, how does that, how does it help you to grow and uh, uh, and how does it make you feel when you write? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I love writing so much. Um, to It feels, I mean, it feels incredible. I think self-expression is one of the most important things in life that we all need to do. We need to do more of it. We need to be encouraged more to to express ourselves, whether it's through writing or music or dancing or yoga or... Whatever it is, creative self-expression is just so vital. So for me, getting words out on paper just feels like openness, you know. It just feels like there's something in here and I know when I there's something I need to write about and I can feel it in my chest or I can feel it in my gut. It's like, all right, something I need to write about because it's up here, it's in my mind and the words are replaying over and over. And just to be able to sit down and, and write it out, whether it's on my laptop or whether I'm, you know, pen to paper, just getting those words out of me, it's just like they're being pulled out and then, you know, when you, you've got it out and you're happy with it and it's like, yes, that's it, like I've totally nailed that. That is just the most incredible feeling to be able to, to express um, an experience or feelings or you know, thoughts or emotions or whatever it is on paper, just that tangible um, your reflection of of your life, of, of what's going on in here and what's going up in here. To be able to um to put that onto yeah into the written word is pretty special. So I love writing very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. It's so great to, when you when someone talks about something they're passionate about because it's like you kind of light up <laughs> and you can tell just by like how you yeah your face kind of changes and so 
So interesting. And how does it, is it important to you how, how many people write what you uh, read what you write or that people read what you write? Or is it like your own thing? And then if, if people want to read it, it's good, but it's not like, is that an important part of the writing? I think it would be easy for me to say that it isn't important to me, but it is because I always feel um, a sense of connection when people have read what I've written and they feel connected to it. So if somebody reads a, a post and, and says to me, that was really incredible, I really read that at the right time or I'm so glad that you wrote that, I've been feeling the same way. Absolutely, that certainly brings a sense of, um, of, of wholeness and satisfaction to the whole process. It is really nice to, to give and to, to post something and to have that return to you as well. Mm -hmm. Saying that, I also have my own personal writing that stays in my journal that no one reads. So I cert like I certainly write my own, you know, personal growth and um, sanity. <laughs> yeah. As well. So there's, yeah, there's both sides of the coin to that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, and there's also, it is really nice, as you say, to feel like you're connected to other people because it's amazing how we sometimes feel really alone with what we're feeling or what we're, we're dealing with, and we never really are. It's like oh, so many people are going through just similar things in different phases. Sometimes they're right in it or they have been, and it's always so nice to like share. It feels like everyone is get, we're all getting closer, and it's I guess being vulnerable as well and saying okay I'm going through this really difficult stuff and this yeah. is how I feel it's kind of I think just the opposite of trying to keep an image of what we're like or like as as maybe coaches or teachers in some way just the fact that that we're sharing how we feel so that it doesn't seem like everything's great all the time and that we always have everything <laughs> I know that when I talk to my clients they're like Oh really? You feel like that too? I'm like, yes, of course I do. It's not because I feel really happy on some days, or if you know, I post like really, I am happy most of the time. But of course, I have like bad days and, and stuff I deal with, just like everyone else. It's that it's like we always think that there's someone who's who's gotten it and who's always doing great, but then of course I don't think that person really exists. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. Absolutely not. You know, and um. You know, that doesn't give you permission to be a negative Nancy and to be down on your all the time and to be like, oh, well, life sucks, you know, and, and whatever. Yeah. It just means that you just wake up every day and you just you do what you need to do to feel, to feel joy in your life and to be grateful for your life and to continue to learn and grow and be the best human being that you can be mm. for yourself, other people in your life, and to just continually show up and do that mm. all the time. You know, like, yeah, sometimes it gets really tough and things go wrong and it's really hard sometimes. Life can be really challenging and really difficult and it seems unfair. But I think, yeah, the more, we, the more we're honest about that and the more that you, we can, uh, are able to connect with other people who might be going through a similar thing, just that, you know, that power in numbers and just to know that somebody else feels the same way as you is just amazing and to know that for forever people have felt like this people go through have gone through these motions for eternity this is the way that we are and it's something really comforting knowing that somebody else um understands how you feel absolutely yeah that's true and it's like it's like it's part of human life to suffer sometimes and to feel pain and so it's not that we're not thinking right we're not doing right it's just like it's just different phases and as long as we can find maybe um, glimpses of hope in that and that we keep, yeah, as you said, it's a practice, isn't it? It's not like we all wake up being happy all the time and that's, and that's it. It's like, okay, feeling crappy today, like what can I be grateful for? I know there's things like that that help me turn around like a bad day. Just thinking of what I'm grateful for, that just really opens something up, doesn't it? Because even when we have, we're going through really difficult stuff, there, there are always things to be grateful. But not in that sort of cheery way, let's find something. It's more like, okay, what really, what yeah. do I really feel like I'm blessed to have in my life? And some days it's just that, that the sun's shining or that my family is here or, or something like that. And, and other days it's like, this is really long because we're feeling really, really happy. <laughs> but that's okay too, isn't it? It's just not like you have to, have to get to a certain level every day. It's like we, we're just... We, we just try to be where we're at and, and take one step further and, mm. and, and that's enough and it's like, that's, yeah, a lot of work already, isn't it? <laughs>
Yeah, absolutely. And the, the gratitude thing is huge. I mean, every morning I, I try to do that before I get out of bed, just think of five things that I'm grateful for. And even on the hardest days of my life, I've done that. I've thought, okay, like, wake up. What are five things in my life right now that I am grateful for that I have? And it might be difficult, but there is always something. There is always something to be grateful for. And if you can start your day like that, if you can really start on that high and just seeing the positives, you know, in, with what you do have, it's so powerful. Yeah, because we tend to kind of look at what we don't have, like in a society where we always need more, like we need to buy more stuff, we have to have a bigger car, like it's always like chasing for more things. And I think it's good to aspire to have or do or be more things, but but it's like the more grateful we are for what we have, it's like the more it kind of brings it in somehow. It's like it's, it's opening up that flow that's really nice because then it's where like in this giving and taking space, which is really, really powerful, I think. And it's amazing because it's like it opens up our eyes, doesn't it, to what we actually have in our lives. And we do have a lot, don't we? I mean, I feel very fortunate. So do I. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, gratitude is a big one for me. I actually, I have a series um, on my blog where every fortnight I write about, it's called The Gratitude Files, and it's just a few things in my life over the past couple of weeks that I felt really grateful for and then that are making my life um, really whole and joyful and that is a really powerful thing for me. I know that my readers really enjoy reading them too, and I really enjoy writing them because they're always they're always really um, uplifting, inspiring posts for me to write too. Because I do, I can reflect on what's um, what is going really well for me in my life at the moment, and even if I have been feeling a little bit down, writing that post is one of the things I really look forward to because it gives me an opportunity to stop and to reflect. Mm -hmm. And I think often in life we don't give ourselves time to do that. And, yeah. you know, regardless of whether you have a blog or, or you don't, just to create, you know, like an hour in, you know, in a fortnight, in a month, to just sit down and write out all of the things that are really going well for you at the moment and that you're really grateful for. That's just such an important, important tool to have in your belt for life, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. But anyone wants to start, unless you're already doing it, take some time out. It is really life changing, is it? It sounds really simple, and I guess it is, but it's, it's, it's simple. really, really, it just really kind of shifts the way we think, doesn't it? And then it's like, once you turn that on, you look for other things that you're grateful for kind of automatically in your life, which is really, really powerful. And it's amazing because it's like we don't, um, I for one, I tend to just keep going and I keep thinking of the next thing I'm, I'm supposed to do. And sometimes my friends or like my coaches, they go, wait a minute, have you reflected on what has just happened? And I'm like, oh, right. It's like we don't, I don't take, take the time to actually take it in properly. Like the, the things that I've achieved or done or like amazing things I'm, I'm, I'm working on. And it, it is really important, isn't it? Cause because otherwise we're always chasing for something that's out there and that we never really reach because as soon as we're there, we go to the next thing. So, yeah, it's like taking that time to just kind of stop and go, okay, where am I? And Absolutely. There's, that's, and that's a big one, isn't it? Just appreciating where you are and where you've come from. I mean, I don't think – I think it can be – quite detrimental to spend too much time in the past but to reflect on where you've come from and where you are now and then to yeah to not worry too much about what's ahead for a minute to just to just stop and go wow like this is pretty incredible where I am right now and I'm in this in this moment everything is perfect and of course then we can move forward from there but too often we're just constantly chasing chasing the future and when this happens I'll feel like this and yeah. all right I've got that off the list now what's next it's like that's it's just yeah right here you know right here on the to-do list and just be okay with that yeah yes. yeah because we're, we're only in that we can only be in the present moment right so if we don't enjoy it when it's happening it's kind of a bit late once we're gone right <laughs> so it's like okay enjoy yeah. this moment and yeah just feel like a fuller more present life doesn't it it's like taking it all in Oh, it does. Life just changes when you can stop and actually be present, be in that present moment and be grateful for everything you have and to just forget about A, B and C that you want to tick off in five or ten years' time and, 
and completely lose attachment to the way that you're going to feel when that happens. I mean, feel that right now. Feel that where you are and, and just observe life as it is in all its magnificence. And even if it is hard and frustrating and challenging at the moment, just be there for that part of it as well because, you, you know, it's so... Um, it's essential to, to feel those parts of life as essential as it is to feel the, you know, the big, beautiful things as well. It, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I think the deeper we can go into like the uncomfortable feelings and accept them without yeah. clinging on to them forever, but just like really taking them in and feeling them, then we can let them go. And then I think it, it kind of, it, it helps us um, to have a, a bigger capacity to take in the good stuff. Cause it's like kind of, I don't know, it's like it's fine tuning us. So if we can feel the really difficult stuff, we can feel even more joy when it comes as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, okay. it is challenging sometimes. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. And I've really had to work on, on the on the presence because I've always lived in the past and in the future. I was always thinking back to like, oh, I was really happy when I was living there or in that relationship or at that old job, you know, that was that was a really great part of my life. And then in the future when I go and do this, then that's going to be really great when I'm living here and when I've achieved that and I've finished that, that's going to be really great. And it took me such a long time to come to that um, that understanding that where I am right now in fact is all i ever have and this moment is all i ever have and you know not reducing this moment as just a, a means of, of getting to where i want to go that's that's been a, a huge revelation for me and has just changed so much in my life yeah so much i always used to be the big planner constantly planning or constantly reminiscing i was never ever here so that's been a huge shift for me it's changed everything Wow, it's amazing because sometimes it's not all we think that will change our lives, right? It's things like yeah. that where you go, all of a sudden you can feel this big shift inside you and it changes everything and like how we look on life and how we live. And it's, it's not necessarily what we expect to be life changing. It, we always think it's going to be something bigger outside of us and actually it's like inside it's how we see things and how we are every day, right? Completely, yeah, completely. Okay, well, it was great, great, great talking to you, Claire, and thank you so much for sharing your journey and, and all the, the interesting lessons that you've shared with us as well. And, um, well, um, have fun writing, and uh, I'll continue reading your blog. <laughs> and so yes. there's a link to your website underneath here so that everyone who's interested in Claire's work can go and check her out. Great. So thank you so much, and have a great day. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye.